All right, Jake Spencer, raise your hand. Jake Spencer, Jacob Parr, the two Jakes, are the founders of Spar Games. Uh, coming off a hugely, hugely successful Kickstarter fundraise, uh, you had a goal of 10 grand? 15. 15, 15. blew past. In the fifth day? Yeah. Until we got to? 47. Thousand. Wow. Uh, they're here to chat about their debut title and other things, Master Thief. Please welcome Jake and Jacob. You don't need that one. Right. So hello, uh, I'm Jacob Parr. Uh, I'm a graphic designer in uh, here in Toledo. I'm Jake Spencer. I'm a writer and I'm also a father. And I'd also like to thank my wife, Leah Markley, who's at home right now watching the boys. We uh, co-founded Spar Games. Um, we're best friends, worst enemies at the same time. Um, we Best friends is debatable. Debatable. We're partners. Uh, we actually graduated from Toledo School for the Arts right across the street. Yeah. Yeah. Actually used to skip lunch and come here. So <laughs> yeah. this is a nice coming back. Perfect thing. venue. Um, yeah. And uh, so we met there. We um, were hate each other. Hate. And miserable. So we found that we um, were very competitive. Uh, a lot of testosterone just raging against each other. I don't know about testosterone with you. But <laughs> we, uh, yeah, no, we, we, we put it to good use. We, we decided we were competitive. We uh, decided we were best friends. And we decided that we uh, liked making games. We were just like finding ourselves making little things here and there. Just whatever could allow me has to anyone, be better. <laughs> has anyone heard of Senate before? Uh, it's an ancient Egyptian board game. Has anyone heard of Lost? The, the show. TV show? The TV show? Yeah. Right. They play it in Lost. And, and oh. there is a uh, there are the characters, the man in white, Jacob, coincidentally, both of us Jacob. And the man in black. Yeah. So we have this whole idea behind Spar Games of black and white, dark and light, good versus evil, he's evil, I'm good. And <laughs> and so this this is just this dynamic that has caused what you know, attention, but a great partnership. I couldn't imagine it any better. And so we co-founded Spar Games and we're making games here in Toledo. So that's the good thing. Uh, so, hello Toledo. <laughs> How's everyone doing tonight? We're fine. Good. <laughs> we want to talk to you about our premier game, Master Thief. Uh, do you want to go into a little? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Master Thief is a game that we uh, conceptualized originally as uh, a meeting between 1960s heist games and the beauty that comes with an art museum. So we wanted to give players the sense that they themselves are the thieves around a table, stealing pieces from a museum, a fictional museum. That's very important. Very important. And <laughs> that they are selling it back to the black market for the most credits available. And while they're doing that, so are the other thieves because you're never alone in a museum. Right. So if you could just imagine the, like, horrible situation where you have entered the museum, you've planned your heist, it's, everything's perfect, and you realize there's like six other people that also had the same plan as you. And so that's the concept of the game. Steal the most valuable artworks of the museum, escape before you get caught, and make sure that you stop your opponents from doing the same. Um, so we ended up working on this game uh, for three years. Three years. So it's in its third <laughs> beta form. But I'd say it's about its 56th iteration. Yes. So it's taken us a long time. Actually, up front, we have um, some of the cards that were handwritten. So that's how we started. And we've got some other ones that were just uh, poor iterations that we decided were not up to snuff for what we wanted it to be. Not up to par. Uh, <laughs> not up to par, as it were. His last name's Par, if you didn't get that. Yeah. <laughs> Self-serving joke. <laughs> And then finally, we have our beta version three, which is what we're calling our final product. Uh, however, it is still just a mock-up copy. We have our rules next to it, which is nice and interesting. But as of right now, uh, we are in the mid stages of actual production of the game. Um, and uh, if you see here, we've got a little section of things um, that have been over the course of the past three years. Uh, uh, we've been playtesting in local coffee shops. We've been trying to get the word out, trying to get people excited. We actually and have uh, Bleak House right there. Yeah. Uh, if we could plug them. Yeah. Uh, they, they hosted our first playtest. Yeah, so that was really awesome. And uh, so it's been, a, it's been a long road. And it's been awesome and rough. Yeah. Uh, and all of it led to eventually... The Kickstarter. Kickstarter. 
uh, yeah. Do you... So uh, <laughs> the reason we chose Kickstarter, it's actually a really important thing. We had thought about a lot of different ways to go about creating a company, creating a game, uh, getting money from ourselves. Um, I, like I said, I'm a father. He's a graphic designer in Toledo. Um, we're trying really hard, but we're also young and uh, broke. Broke. That's exactly the right word. Yeah. Um, so when we decided that we were going to use crowdfunding, we started looking into other crowdfunding sites like GoFundMe and um, yeah, you know the other places. And uh, we came up with Kickstarter because of uh, first it has the all or nothing, and that's something that we were really all about. Is um, essentially unless we make our goal, we don't get anything. Yeah, nothing, nothing ventured, nothing gained. But it, with things like GoFundMe and some of the other ones, if you have a goal of like our goal was fifteen thousand, uh, if we set the goal at fifteen thousand and we don't quite reach it, we're still expected to provide what we said we were going to provide. And for us, we just didn't have the capital to really invest our own. Like we had already been investing our own money in testing and things like that, but we didn't have enough to really like fully grasp onto all of the production that would be required for this. Um, we reached out to Ad Magic. Ad Magic is a company out of uh, New Jersey, and they produce Cards Against Humanity. Uh, so we know that they do a good quality game. And that uh, was extremely important to us. Yeah. We didn't want to create pieces of art that didn't meet up with the quality that they deserved. Right. It's already beautiful things. People will understand and know the pieces of art that they'll find in the museum in Master Thief. And to showcase it with cheap flimsy cards was going to be just a complete letdown. It was not an option. So we went with the best we could get and uh, and so we got a number from them, told them what we wanted, play tested them a little bit and they were happy to see that it was not another Cards Against Humanity knockoff. <laughs> Which because apparently is quite common. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> um, so that, yeah, there, okay, cool, yeah, awesome. Um, so the launch of the Kickstarter, uh, we had built up for a long time, like we're gonna do it on September 19th. It's gonna be a huge event, it's gonna be big. We're gonna have a launch party, which we found was an extremely important part of any Kickstarter. We highly recommend doing a launch party. Absolutely, we were lucky enough to be able to use the Mommy Performing Arts Center uh, due to its manager, Jamie Mer Nergon. Um, mm -hmm. And that was uh, a huge help. We got to set up tables, we got to do um, a big thing. We had to get up on stage and actually launch our video. Yeah, which, there it is! High five right when we <laughs> so that was a really cool yeah. capture of the moment. Oh, shot. that was a good moment. Okay, we're gonna. <laughs> That's... Uh, so, the Kickstarter required, uh, well, it doesn't require, but it's highly recommended that you uh, have a video. Uh, it's where people can kind of get the, the best knowledge that they can, know exactly what you're about, and know the game. Uh, so, we'd like to play the video for you. Um, that's right. If that's. Yeah, um, and that's what we're going to do. The sound's coming out of this, so you're just going to have to... Cool. Master Thief is a game of action, cunning, and 
Uh, this shot here um, actually came right out of uh, North, uh, North Design where I work. Um, and then anything that was on the stage was at the uh, Maumee Performing Arts Center where we had our party. So we, I don't know, we tried to be resourceful with whatever we could. Uh, putting our friends in there, trying to yeah. just, we didn't hire professional actors or real thieves in the process. <laughs> they might be thieves, we don't know. We, we unsure. Yeah. yeah. Um, we also used Chris Hatfield. Um, he's a uh, the uh, videographer here in Toledo. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he really pulled through for us because uh, getting a, a good quality video is gonna also be expensive. And since we didn't have the Kickstarter funds at that point, uh, it was kind of like, hey, help us out. If we meet our goal and we go past it, there's a paycheck in it for you. And that's yeah. it's a weird, interesting way to think about it, but I think that. It worked out really nicely. He knew he had faith in it. He had faith in the project, so he knew that there was something down the road for him. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, basically just a nice introduction to us. And, and I think that's very important. Because yes. As uh, you're on Kickstarter, you're not selling just a product. You're also selling yourselves. People invest in people. Um, so we had to show exactly who we were and be as honest as possible. Yeah. Uh, Kickstarter proved to be a full-time job. Uh, it was intense. Uh, we, we blew past the goal within five days, which was, should have been super exciting. It was, <laughs> it was great, and it was. It was, it was, it was mind-blowing. It was just a wonderful thing, um, but we knew that there was just a hell of a lot of upkeep, and we had to make sure we kept everyone in the loop Everyone had to be messaged back right away. Everything's all very timely, and ultimately, it was just a just a second job, and it was it was an amazing experience. It's totally worth it, and we totally will do Kickstarter again yes. on our next game. Absolutely. For sure. uh, there are a couple um, tiers in Kickstarter that we found out that we didn't know. That's not necessarily inherent in anything that you'll find out just reading, but. Um, when you're first launching, you're on a list that's like recently launched, and uh, you get a lot of publicity for that. Uh, the second one that you can get is if you get picked by the staff of Kickstarter, you're on another list, Staff Picks, which we got, which was great. And so then suddenly we're being uh, promoted again, and we're starting to see some numbers rolling again. And then it kind of you know teeters out, gets a little steadier. Uh, and the last thing that happens is in within the last 48 hours of your 30 days, uh, you get on an ending soon list. And once you're on that, it's just all hell breaks loose and everyone's just like throwing whatever they can at you. Um, and not money, I'm, I'm the questions and concerns and Absolutely. <laughs> everything. Absolutely. Um, so, things we did right. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's, that's a few and far between. <laughs> short list. We, we had a lot of faith in our game. We, we had uh, a great video that sold the concept, had everything going for it, and uh, we think we got the idea across because at this point with Kickstarter, it's it's only based on concept. Um, and even though the game is a finished product, we have rules, and people could download the rules and read it through for themselves. Um, a lot of people were really like hardcore gamers, and they were they had They're a lot of questions. Invested in this, extremely and invested for multiple reasons. Not only are they donating money to something that might not ever come to fruition, but they're also uh, gamers who want to see something that is a great product that they can buy, or their friends can buy, or something that will change the course of game making. Yeah. And on the other note, Kickstarter gives you great opportunity to make a lot of mistakes. And one of the things that we found out through researching Kickstarter beforehand is that you can actually provide, you know, you provide the reward levels. You, you come in at a $25 level, hey, thank you so much, you're gonna get a copy of the game in the mail. But then you have early birds. So let's say you're one of the first people to get there, give us $20, you're gonna get a copy of the game. And that's limited to like the first 150 people. It seems relatively common throughout the board. Right. Everybody was doing essentially early bird <laughs> with like maybe $5 knocked off and then the regular tiers and so on and so forth. Right, so in our campaign, we had uh, more levels, the lower, the, you know, the higher you donated, the lower down the list, um, you could actually get the, a copy of our first expansion, which is cursed items in the museum. And then at the end, you get a 
Kickstarter exclusive, items that you can only find on this Kickstarter. And those didn't have early bird levels. So the people that came in at the early bird level, or the people that wanted to but wanted everything else, had a big problem with that. And what amounted to, you know, essentially that $5 difference was enough to really just unleash a torrent of horrible publicity in our comment section. Which uh, we responded to as politely as possible. Um, I think yeah. at one point we actually got one of the people who were complaining and angry uh, to say, I think one of you might be a political science major. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's how carefully we thought everything out um, before we said anything. Yeah. Um, however, uh, to be honest, we do understand the mistakes that we did make. Um, and not only uh, should we have included the Kickstarter as an early bird, um, but uh, in our responses originally, we had essentially said, it's not going to happen. We're not going to be able to do it because we would be upsetting people that had bought at this tier. Yeah, so we're going to undermine people that did it with no question. And then as soon as we, you know, retroactively put something else in for the people that, I mean, yeah, they, they have every, they can voice their concern. And if we act to it, then awesome. Everyone's happy except the people that already did it with no questions asked. So it was this just weird balancing act of making sure that everyone is as happy as they can be and just treating everyone fairly because ultimately they're providing the capital for us and without them, we're, we're not gonna be able to go anywhere. And those were not our only mistakes uh, where you just moved right on. <laughs> we also did not um, have a gameplay video. I don't know if you remember the that's, giant hassle that that That's became. true. Whereas this, the initial video uh, sold us, sold the idea of the game, it didn't explain in a play-by-play uh, -play exactly how the game works. See, we wanted our Kickstarter page to be extremely streamlined, and that was something that was extremely important to us because our game is streamlined, our company is streamlined. We try and do everything as uh, efficiently as possible. So we thought that showing a general idea and giving the rules was enough for people. But as we started uh, getting our complaints and we started researching further into other Kickstarter projects, not just games, um, anything that was on Kickstarter, they did offer a more um, enhanced look at the product. And that was something that we failed to do. Yeah, so about midway, about day 15 or so, we filmed a secondary video and then we were able to get that in and just loosely go through you know, each and every set of the rules and yeah, and that made everyone happy. So that was good. So being reactive is, is just as important when doing a Kickstarter. Um, so yeah, we want to thank you so much for coming out and listening to us ramble on about our ourselves. game, ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, we want this to you know, be a conversation, and uh, we thank you so much for listening to that. So, all right, so the game itself is going to, I think at wholesale value, it's going to be about $6. Yeah, so and that's and because we, we're actually investing in the, the quality of the cards. We're going to have some, some of the cards are going to have like holographic printing, some specialty things, some gloss, and just a sturdy quality game. And uh, so when that's finished, we're going to have that, and we're retailing it for uh, $24.99. Yeah? Insider information there, but... I guess I guess we but can it's be open. On the web now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's all it's all there. You're all wholesalers. <laughs> Anyone? Yes. Hi, Sarah. Hi. What was the percentage that Kickstarter ended up taking from your? What percentage does Kickstarter take? They uh, Kickstarter takes uh, about eight percent. It was it was there was an algorithm involved that we know very little about. Um, we know that we made uh, X amount and got X amount, and so factored in, it ended up being about eight percent. Yeah. I'm actually gonna kill this just because we're blinded. Yeah, totally don't blame you. But what about our hashtags? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I did. <laughs> no, 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 don't turn that off. One more time. Thank there we go. Me. Yeah. Anyone? I think, I think she asked. Kelly? Well, when, is it available? when is the game available? Very good question. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're, we're in production right now. And so we have to get final art files all sorted out. And even though the game is done, it's all about, about um, how the uh, production company is going to need to receive the files. 
um, having everything set there. The packaging design has to be just perfect because if we don't have the cards with enough room to give them sleeves for collectors, that's going to be a problem. If we don't do this and this, it's going to be, you know, it's so we're, we're you know, crossing our T's, dotting our I's to make sure that everything is perfect. Uh, Bottom line, I would say somewhere around March. I would say March is uh, extremely fair. We, we were shooting uh, for beginning of February. And so just going through, making sure that everything's good. Uh, we, a lot of our um, backers have said that having something that is well put together, a little bit better quality is way more worth it than getting it quickly. So March is going to be, I would say, our good strong point right there. Uh, you can go to spargames.com. Uh, yeah, it's, but it's going to be available uh, with Prime shipping on Amazon. Uh, we're going to use uh, Amazon you know, to the fullest extent. They have their uh, fulfillment, and uh, you know, people like Prime. I, I will avoid buying something if it's not Prime. So. <laughs> Anyone? Yeah. Any legal issues? What, what, what has the yes. legal landscape been like for you guys? Absolutely. Um, there was a lot that we had to deal with when, when dealing with the legal issues. Um, because the museums themselves cannot give the rights to any of the, the artwork in their museums. They have to talk to the families or the, um, the estate. Um, so what we had to do, essentially, was uh, find anything that was in public domain. Um, so anything that was, uh, I think, 76 years or older. I think so. We, we erred on the side of 100 years or older right. just to be 100% safe. And for the more generic items, you'll find like there's a, a Grecian vase. There, is, there are a, a, an assortment of gems that you can get in the museum. Those are all um, uh, bought, like stock photography that we have like heavily altered and, uh, and designed. But, it, but we know that we own that particular photograph of that particular gem. So that way, we're not, we're not going to have any trouble down the line. And to plug Jacob a little bit, he got these things through Shutterstock, which he won at Pixels of Fury. Woo! Yeah, a design competition. So that was that was way before Master Thief had ever taken hold and uh, it's ultimately one of the things that also kickstarted us, I yeah, would say. I totally agree. Dan, again. How big was your sort of local following? I know you did play tests and all that. Before you did the Kickstarter, you had a launch party. I guess how many people are all your raving fans here? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Oh, there's Neil. There's Neil. There's Neil. <laughs> yeah. We we tried. We we have we have we had a lot of friends that really believed in us and and all of our families. We, we it was that was the, the biggest support group at that point. Um, at our launch party, we had I would say about forty people. Uh, and a, you know, friends bringing other friends and family bringing friends. And uh, so that was the turnout there. And that night when we launched, it was just all of us. We all know each other. We're all playing games. And we start seeing the numbers just skyrocket up. And they're like, these people are from New Zealand and Germany. Like, we don't know these people. This right. is great. Yeah, <laughs> because of the product. I mean, uh, speaking of our friends and family, I still get asked the question, when am I going to get a real job? So... <laughs> 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 You're we, a writer, though, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll get that my whole life. <laughs> Anyone else? Let's take one more. Yes, sir. You have a strip version. You have a strip version of the game. Oh, always, always. Yeah. yeah. Any game we make, we call that spar mode. Yeah. <laughs> Play with your best friend. <laughs> And on that note, um, <laughs> thanks again, everybody, for coming. Let's let's give these guys a round of applause again. <laughs>